This video will discuss uh, Uranus and Neptune and uh, complete our tour of the Jovian planets. We will not discuss much about the rings of these planets, but uh, just more the, the body of the planet. So we're out in the outer solar system now, Uranus and Neptune, um, farther than Saturn. Again, their sizes here, smaller than Saturn, but significantly bigger than the Earth. And as far as where they're located, here's a 2012 location, the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and Pluto. And here's the situation in 2014. And if you notice, they've, they've not moved very much. If I can blink this back and forth, 2012, 2014, Uranus, and Neptune. So there's a slow motion because, again, their semi-major axis is large. So it takes a significant number of years to uh, to move around the sun. <clears throat> the uh, planets have been imaged as the Voyager spacecraft flew past uh, both objects. And if you'll notice, Uranus does not have as much uh, noticeable features in the visible light uh, compared to Neptune. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the planet Uranus. So we're now getting beyond the readily visible planets. Um, however, Uranus is bright enough to see with the eye if you're in a dark location. And I believe it had been uh, accidentally plotted as a star, but not recognized as a planet. The word planet means wandering star. And Uranus you know, takes 84 years to move around the sun. So very slow motion on the sky and uh, just was not uh, readily apparent that it was moving through the constellations. However, as Herschel investigated the skies with his telescope, he discovered this uh, planet in 1781. It does have a small disk on view from a telescope and does not twinkle the way a star twinkles. So that's characteristic of a planet. The bigger size of the object um, limits the effect of twinkling through the atmosphere. But Herschel started plotting it uh, and realized it was moving around the sun. Um, wanted to name it in honor of uh, uh, the King of England, but uh, the astronomical community went with the mythological sequence of uh, naming the planets. We could call it an ice giant instead of just a gas giant. The temperatures are much colder, of course, being farther from the sun than Saturn. It does have hydrogen helium predominantly. Uh, but again contains methane and ammonia ices. Uh, the methane has a big effect on the coloration we view for the planet Uranus because methane absorbs a red light, an orange light. That allows the blue end of the sun's spectrum to be reflected back towards us. Uranus doesn't emit uh, uh, light on its own, but it modifies the sunlight that's reflected back to us by absorbing more at the red end. Um, unlike uh, Jupiter and Saturn, as far as we know, there's no significant internal heat source for the planet Uranus. Um, a word of you know, sorry, historical interest here for the discovery of the rings of Uranus. Some astronomers were watching a star that was going to be covered by the disk of Uranus, and they wanted to see how the starlight dimmed as the star was covered by the atmosphere of Uranus. They were trying to understand how thick the atmosphere of Uranus was and how well it transmitted starlight. Well, they set up their equipment, and before the planet covered the star, the astronomers noticed that the star was changing brightness, and it dimmed down and got back to regular brightness, dimmed more a few more times, regular brightness, dimmed down again, regular brightness, and then the atmosphere effect and covered by Uranus. And then after Uranus had moved past the star, this sequence of dimmings occurred again, and roughly the spacings were the same as to uh, when the star was uh, obscured but dimmed down. The spacing was the same in time on the left side of Uranus and the right side of Uranus, and they quickly realized that they had discovered the rings of Uranus. So 1977, uh, the planet Uranus does have rings. These rings have been photographed by the Voyager spacecraft in 1986 as it flew past Uranus. You can 
the camera was set up to track the rings. These uh, paths here are stars, and you can see stars through the rings. So the spacecraft is where you are, looking at this picture, then the rings, and then in the distance, of course, the stars. But the rings are not solid. They're like uh, the rings of the other planets, a lot of debris in orbit around the planet, uh, but not a solid disk. More on rings later. Uh, the planet Uranus can be uh, imaged in infrared photography from a telescope on a uh, a tall dormant uh, volcano in Hawaii, the Keck Telescope, in, in infrared. At that location, the telescopes are above quite a bit of the Earth's water vapor, so infrared astronomy is more possible. And you can see a few details uh, being picked up here by the infrared uh, camera versus the visible light. The Hubble Telescope has photographed aurora on the planet Uranus. Aurora. You can see the glow of light here up above the atmosphere and a glow over here where the uh, aurora happened to be in line with the disk when this was taken. So what does uh, the presence of an aurora suggest about the planet? And you should be saying magnetic field. Now the measurements of the magnetic field by the Voyager spacecraft gave us an unusual, unexpected result. Um, so we have the planet Uranus and I didn't mention yet, but it has a very unexpected result in that the poles of the planet Uranus are almost in its orbital plane. Um, the north pole of the Earth is tilted 23 and a half degrees away from being perpendicular to the Earth's orbital plane. But the planet Uranus, the pole is tilted by about 98 degrees away from perpendicular. So the pole is down in nearly in the orbital plane of the planet, a mystery as to uh, why that is. Um, <clears throat> so with that 98 degrees, Uranus actually spins backwards on its, uh, in its rotation. Um, but we have uh, the other thing with the magnetic field is that for the Earth and Jupiter and Saturn, the magnetic pole is just a few degrees away from the rotation axis of the planet. Um, for the planet Uranus, there is a great difference, almost 60 degrees, of separation between the rotation axis, say the north pole of the planet, and the north magnetic pole. Uh, very big angle here, then it's uh, completely unexpected. So, the planet Uranus does have a magnetic field, does uh, rotate in a strange way, does have aurora, and a few cloud features, especially in the infrared. I might also mention the uh, rotation of uh, Uranus on its axis is uh, not as fast as Jupiter and Saturn, uh, about 17.2 hours for the time for one spin of Uranus on its axis. So let's go uh, to Neptune. Neptune in visible light does show some cloud features and the great dark spot. Um, again, a weather feature, an atmospheric feature on the uh, in the planet, you have the ammonia clouds uh, in the atmosphere of the planet, some other cloud features that can be picked up uh, uh, as you look at the planet. So the discovery of Neptune is historically of interest as well. As astronomers plotted the uh, orbit of Uranus, they found it was not moving on a uh, an expected ellipse, a simple ellipse. It was being pulled off course. So they predicted uh, that there was some outer planet that had not been discovered yet whose gravity was uh, giving Uranus a, a pull off of its uh, expected orbit. So that was uh, calculated by, by two astronomers, kind of a, a competition and uh, a rivalry and so some intrigue and politics involved and uh, with one astronomer getting favorable reception from uh, the observatory looking for this distant planet, another astronomer not getting a favorable reception. But the discovery took place then in uh, 1841, and it was based on calculations of where this mystery planet would be located to pull on Uranus the way that uh, the observations of Uranus' path indicated. So, 1841, and whereas uh, Uranus takes 84 years to go around the sun, 
We're further away from the Sun now, larger orbit, 165 years, and we've only been tracking Neptune for one orbit since it was discovered. Um, 165 years for one trip around the Sun. We're back now to an internal heat source. There's evidence that the planet is radiating more energy than it receives from the Sun, and we've got this little more lively atmosphere indicating that energy is present in the atmosphere to a greater degree than for the planet Uranus. Um, so Hubble telescope pictures can track atmospheric features. Um, you can see uh, so some of the clouds changing up to 2002. Um, this is during one rotation of uh, Neptune. The Hubble telescope took a sequence of pictures and you can kind of track rotation from here over to here to here to here. Uh, again, cloud features can be observed from uh, the Hubble telescope for, for what's happening on Neptune. And Neptune's uh, rotation, you know, one spin of its axis is around 16 hours around 16 hours for one spin of its axis. So a little faster than Uranus, but slower than Jupiter and Saturn. The largest planets have pulled in the most, and, and there's a principle of conservation of angular momentum. They've uh, sped up the most. The planets are not quite as large. We get 16, 17 hours for the rotation period. The Earth, 24 hours. So a little trend there. Uh, viewing Neptune with the Keck telescope in Hawaii in the infrared, again where it's brighter there's more energy and you can see evidence of temperature differences in the atmosphere of, of Neptune. This uh, is not looking down deep in the planet, this is investigating the atmosphere of the planet, uh, but there are regions and temperature differences and uh, some more activity in Neptune than there is on the planet Uranus. Um, so, planet Uranus on the left here, visible light, planet Neptune off to the right. You ought to be uh, reviewing this and asking questions, and uh, um, if I, maybe I'd just answer one for you here. If I go back to this track of the orbits of uh, these outer planets, um, you know, Pluto for about 30 years in the 1900s was closer to the Sun than Neptune, but this uh, plot is a, just slightly misleading. Um, there's no danger that these two objects will collide, that Pluto and Neptune will collide. Um, Pluto's orbit is inclined to the orbit of the planets and it's up above. There's a third dimension in this uh, period of time here where we see from the top down view the uh, orbits of Pluto and Neptune being close. Actually they're not close. Pluto is up above the plane of Neptune's orbit here. So no danger that these two will collide. And uh, we'll talk more about Pluto in the future, why it's not a planet. So with that, we'll stop. You keep reading. Bring a list of questions to your instructor.